Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we have together uh, to spend some time in your word, and we thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit to guide us and to help us extract the profit that, that's in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so my topic is about sanctification. Rick kind of touched on it last Sunday, but uh, I, I'm, that was that's what I'm going to talk about. So, um, it's, it's, uh, for me in my life, it's been one of those words that you're like, I'm not sure what that means. You know what I mean? It's kind of like pie in the sky, you know, holy and sanctified. I never really grasped it until, you know, later in, in life. So it's a word that uh, is important to you and I as believers because it's who it's talking about. Uh, sanctification is a synonym for the word holy. It just means to be set apart. So the indication is that we're to be different from someone else, and that would be the lost. So it is a, it is a uh, significant word to you and I as believers, for someone who has trusted Christ as their Savior. And so... Now, that's in God's eyes, we, whether we feel it or not, when you get saved, it's, it's a uh, spiritual thing. It's like everything else Paul teaches. And you don't feel it, you have to read about it. Otherwise, you really don't know. And so, in the eyes of God, we are set apart. We are sanctified. We are. That is our current positional status in God's sight, which is a good thing. So that's who it has to do with, and it also has to do with our walk, how we conduct ourselves, how we live our lives. It's, it's going to have everything's going to have to be different in order for us to fulfill our purpose for being left behind here as, uh, as saved people. We have a we have something to do, and it is to reach the lost. So it's going to require a sanctified, different lifestyle in order for someone else to listen or even consider what we say. That's why it's important. Um, 1 Timothy 2, 4, we all know this one, but that's really what, what it's all about. 1 Timothy 2, 4 says, we will have all men be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. So the all men is for us, as well as, the, as members of the body of Christ, and also to the lost. How, how else would they be saved if it wasn't for a sanctified saint sharing with them? Or, and, and, and that's going to take a lot of times, uh, especially if somebody knows something about you and your past. You're, you know, like Paul. Paul is a great example of that. He has a horrible reputation, but he didn't bat an eye, and he just preached the gospel. And he, he put on the new man that he refers to a lot. And he didn't, you know, it's, I, I think about uh, Moses. When God told Moses, you're going to be my guy, he, uh, not me, not me, right? I, how, they're not going to listen to me. But Paul didn't do that. He just, he when on the road to Damascus, he says, who art thou, Lord? And he revealed to him who he was and what he wanted to do, and he just did it without, without uh, any hesitation. So it's important for us to grasp that. So, um, with that, I will I throw a couple more verses at you. Uh, Ephesians 5, verse 8, and 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. Because lost people are in darkness, so the, 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 the indication is that we, if they're in darkness, then we need to be enlightened. And we are enlightened when we're saved. So they, they're in dark, darkness, and we provide that light um, through the Word, of course, not our opinions and things like that. It's a, a sanctified lifestyle is rooted in the Word of God, rightly divided. Uh, so Ephesians 5, 8, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are ye light in the world. Are, are ye light in the world? Walk as children of light. So our walk is our, how we conduct ourselves. Ye there is significant because that's not, for, if you don't, if you just skim over that, you think he's talking about you individually. But ye is, a, as we know, is a plurality of you. So 
it's talking about collectively the body of Christ. Individually, yeah, you, we, we, we do have to follow what it's saying, but collectively it's talking about if the body of Christ is, doesn't walk a sanctified lifestyle, we'll never fulfill our purpose. 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5 says, Ye are children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor darkness. So sanctification, again, we have to walk differently in order to reach the lost. So the believer, when we say the believer, just a real quick gospel message here. Uh, Romans 5.12 very important, very important verse to uh, grasp because you could go through life hearing people say you're a sinner. And I used to spend two hours a day going back and forth to work, so I listen to the old Christian radio station all the time. And they'll use the Ten Commandments as a uh, standard to say there's no way you could uh, you can you can uh, say you haven't sinned because one of these verses, one of these commandments you've broke. But still, that's a subjective thing because a lot of people will say, I'm pretty good. You know, so it, that kind of introduces, like I said, subjectivity. Five, Romans 5.12 puts it to rest because it talks about the, the culpability we share in what happened in, in Genesis 3 in the garden. Um, he says... Um, I guess I should turn to it. I didn't put it on here. Sin came into the world by one man and death by sin. Hang on. Romans 5. Okay. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, so for that all have sinned. So, though it's, if you, if we were to continue reading the ver the chapter, it would re it's going to reveal that that one man is talking about Adam. So, and then there's the it passed over all men. So, we are sinners because we're perpetually related to Adam. A lot of people don't, you know, you might they don't like that, like they don't they don't understand that. But regardless. It is your problem, so there is an there is a way around this, of course. And uh, if we look at Romans three twenty two, chapter three, verse twenty two, it says, "Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God." So, there's no way around it. All have sinned because we're all related to Adam. But here's the antidote. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ. So, there's some redemption in Christ. Verse 25, whom God set, hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So today, in the age of grace that we're in, to say you believe in Jesus implies that you are trusting in his shed blood, not that he was just here, he walked the earth. No, you're trusting in his shed blood as full payment for your sins, exclusively and exclusive of works. So there, now, if you've trusted that, you're a sanctified saint. You're to be holy, set apart from the lost in your lifestyle and in your, in your belief in the, the, the scriptures. Um, Paul uses the word sanctified at, for us to, as it's a, pos a current, permanent possession. We are sanctified. And he uses that language in uh, several verses here. 1 Corinthians ch uh, chapter 1, verse 2, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 11. Again, he uses as a current position. It's a positional status 
of the believer, a new member of the body of Christ, all these benefits happen to us immediately and simultaneously. 1 Corinthians 1, 2, he says, Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified, not trying to be, you are sanctified, in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all that in every place, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus our Lord, both theirs and ours. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 11, again, I'm just trying to point out that it's a, it's a permanent thing, it, it's, it's a current thing. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now that word washed there is, is not water. That's where it goes back again to Romans 3. We are washed in the, in the blood of Jesus Christ. So, we, and all, those, all the things that he's talking about, you are washed, you are sanctified, you are set apart, and, in, and you are justified. So we're justified, as, and as a result of being justified, we are sanctified. Uh, I'll read, uh, let's see. And, and, and is it a fleeting thing? No. Uh, Ephesians 1.13, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit, with that Holy Spirit of promise. And I like to piggyback that one uh, uh, with Ephesians 4, and I didn't put the n verse number, but Ephesians 4. <sighs> I did it again, didn't I? Yeah. We, uh, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Does anybody see that? Verse 30. Okay, thank you. So, grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. So, being, being saved, being holy, being justified, it's, uh, it's eternal. And that's a good thing. And But we get all of our blessings up front. It's all spiritual blessings, everything is up front, which is contrast Israel's program. Okay, so how should we walk? Uh... When this is walk again, that's that's a reference to how we live our life, and there's a there is a uh, visible aspect or a visible uh, benefit to the way you walk in the sight of the lost because they're the ones that are going to benefit and they they want to see what if you put on what you what you believe. Philippians. Uh, 2.14 and 2 Corinthians 2.14. Funny how that worked out. Uh, again, they put, it just describes more of the importance of our sanctified walk. It says, do all, th uh, Philippians 2.14, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, I have 2.14, but, do all things without murmurings and disputings that you may be, they, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. So there's a, a light attraction that indicates to us that we need to put on what we believe because there's people watching. There's people looking over our fence, if you, if you want to say. Uh, for Second Corinthians 2, again, verse 14 now thanks be to, unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us. And, and again, we're talking body of Christ in every place. For, for we are unto God, there is that word are, possession. We are unto God a sweet Savior of Christ in them that are saved, and in them that perish. So, lost have what we have. They have. 
They have a uh, volition. They have, they have an awareness of God. Uh, Romans 1, 19 says that he put, God put an awareness in, in every man. So they got volition, they got an awareness of God, and they also have a sin nature. So we're trying to, through their volition, put on a sanctified lifestyle to, to hopefully get them out of the snare of the, of the devil. Uh, so, and um, again, there's a way to, Paul puts it really sweet here in Galatians 5.16. Uh, he says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So that's, a, again, another indication of how we should walk at all times where we can be that light to the, to the lost world. And we're also, turn to uh, 2 Corinthians 6. There's something else we're supposed to be separated from. It's very important. And, and it stems from the Old Testament when God told, told the, uh, the Jews to stay away from the religious system, the, the false. We as believers, back then, what did they believe? They believed God. They believed what God said. They believed God's word. And they had it audibly up, up until a certain point. But they were to stay away from that, have no other gods before you. So in 2 Corinthians 6, it, it's just, it, it is the, uh, another thing that we're supposed to be separate from as well. Verse 14 be ye not equally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord... No, that's, that's it right there. So, no, I'll go ahead. I'm sorry. Verse 15, what concord hath Christ with Bilal? Bilal, that's Baal worship. Basically, anything other than believing God is 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 uh, abomination. So what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? So, so verse 16, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? So we're talking about the religious system. Be a separate, be sanctified from that. And that's very important because we can't put that on display because that's, if we said there's two classes, we're not we're not nation building anymore. We're, we're in the body. I'm sorry. In the uh, age of grace we live in, there's really there's the saved and the lost. That's really all we're talking about. This would be anything other than Paul's gospel uh, today, uh, because. Uh, the false worshiping, the, the false idols, the religious system. If we're going to be different from them, we're sanctified in the guise of God, then we walk by faith, which means they don't walk by faith, or else we wouldn't be different. They walk by, we walk by faith, not by sight. So if you flip that around, you know something about these people. They walk by sight and not by faith. Therefore, a sanctified believer can be uh, manifest in order to reach them. So that tells us that God knows something about the lost and the way they think, and here's how you ought to walk because of the how, you know, in retrospect, the way they, the way they walk. So to be different, to be set apart. So do we have to? Uh, Romans chapter 6, do we have to? Uh, you know, that's the amazing grace. The answer is no, we don't have to. And once you trust Christ as your Savior, that, then, you know, that's the next question. And, and you're like, it's, it's kind of like, the, okay, now what? I'm saved. Now what? How do I walk? And should I just continue in sin? In sin? He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And then you get the divine protest there. God forbid. 
You can, but you're only, you've taken the, the benefit of being saved, kept it to yourself, to selfishness, and said, I'm going to keep on living my life the way I am. I'll take wood, hay, and stubble. But that's not why we're here. We're here to be effective to, uh, for Christ. And if you do do that, you're a saved person, but you won't be. It's probably, like I think for all of us, we can say we've got some family, some friends that we would like to reach at some point in our lives. And if we do chapter 6, verse 1, we, it, it, it's not going to happen. It, it, you're going to have a very hard time. Most likely, you're not going to be effective in reaching them. So, because if, if, you, if you go from being lost and you get saved and you decide, well, I don't have to do this, so in my walk and my behavior, I come back down here, these people are never going to listen to you. Because you hear it all the time, you're a hypocrite. They don't understand, okay, I'm going to drop the ball every now and then. But they, look, they do judge, right? So putting on a sanctified lifestyle is going to be very important to be effective. So do we have to? No, but should we? If you, yes. Because our, that's the whole point of being here still after you're being saved. If we were like Enoch and just shot up there, what good would that do for a lost world? So uh, now, what, so what is our motivation? In, uh, uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and 2 Corinthians 5. I learned this from Rick. <laughs> and Colossians 3. See, I couldn't find the pages last time because I was so stinking nervous, so I printed it out. And I went, I went to public school, and I figured that out. <laughs> Colossians 3.15. Okay, so we're talking about motivation. Uh, I think this is a great verse here, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. This, he, he pretty sums it up. He pretty well sums it up right here. He says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry. He says, we. Of course, he had it at his time, the people he was with. But, uh, of course, he tells us to be. Uh, four, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. No? Oh, my head. Son of a gun. I, I thought I checked all this. Okay, thank you, Nick. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah, you're right. First Corinthians, second Corinthians. Okay, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, comma, I like that. It says, as we have received mercy, we faint not. He, he, you know, Paul realizes how lucky he was, how fortunate he was to be given mercy because he was a bad guy. And so he uses that mercy as motivation to say, I have this ministry, I have I've been given mercy. I'm not going to dread doing it. So that's what I believe what he's meaning by we faint not. And he says we there. Uh, but he says, I have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. So there's that manifestation again, that, that exterior showing of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, that's a small g God, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That would be through us. So, that again, these people down here are, are what's driving them is that small g, the small g God, Satan, is uh, who's blinded the minds of them. So, uh, go back to uh, 
verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge. Notice that says to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So that's who we represent, Jesus Christ. And the light is has been given to, to us and we're to shine it out there. So there's that exterior attraction, exterior attraction that the lost have. Now, we would never say, I walk by sight. We walk by faith, but they don't. Therefore, we take advantage of that or we exploit that weakness in them. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14, I hope that's right. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then all were dead, and if he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. That's our purpose. That's more motivation for not being that Romans 6 person, Romans 6, 1. And then uh, Colossians 3.15, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. There again, there's this, that's just grace motivation right there. Okay, and now we, I went over the lost walk by sight. Kind of got that out of order, but we want them to see in us what we want them to be. That's really the point. So, he also he also contrasts that uh, at how not to walk. Uh, Ephesians chapter, I'm sorry, First Corinthians three, Ephesians four, and Ephesians five. This is how you. This is uh, you know we know how to walk, but here's also by the way here's how not to walk, and that's important as well. Um, the safe, let's see, I have right here. Paul gives us examples of the believers that are living contrary to them, contrary to how they should as ambassadors. They're saved people, but living and walking like carnal people. So to be carnal is to be of your flesh, which is a self centeredness, and not walking in the spirit as lost men do. They're, but the, the, and the Corinthians were a great example of that. They're ignorant because they're babes in Christ. So we want to continue on, like in a, what Timothy 2 4 says, 1 Timothy 2 4 is to be saved and grow and come into the knowledge of the truth because you want to put, you're only going to be a mature saint by, by maturing in the Word. So 1 Corinthians 3. Verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babes in, in Christ. I have fed you with milk, not with meat. For hitherto you were able to bear it, neither, neither yet were not able to bear it, neither yet are you now able to bear it, for you are yet carnal. Um, whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, you, are you not carnal and walk as men? That's that's walking contrary to who you are. Rick hammers a lot on know your identity. There's a reason for that. You got to know who you are. You're going to have to read about it so you can walk in line with how God sees us. So that's the maturing process. Um, milk is a, you know, spirit, the gospel of your salvation is the, the easiest thing to understand. It's it's as the milk is to a babe. So, but the idea is that you continue on in maturity to strong meat. Ephesians 4, 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them because of the blindness of their heart. It goes back to the, the lost there, the, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them 
that are lost. And uh, um, Ephesians 5.15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Circumspectly, I, I looked that up, careful consideration of all circumstances and a desire to avoid mistakes. So when he says walk circumspectly, that's uh, more motivation to try to walk correctly. Uh, okay, so we are at my conclusion. Um, but I just want to hammer home the point that sanctification is, is, is uh, important that you, you, you understand that's the way God sees you as a saved person. And then when you understand that, then the idea is that you will walk in line with that knowledge. And that way you, you bolster the body of Christ and you, we can be effective in reaching the lost. That's, again, why we're here. So... My con in conclusion, the saved are sanctified for the purpose of reaching the lost. God knows what lost people desire to see in a saved person. Thus, our apostle teaches us how to be the person we want them to see and become. This is also telling us what a sanctified walk, that a sanctified walk is the only way to reach them. We can't behave like them and we can't expect them to follow if, if, we, if, we, won't. if we don't. It, it won't work. Most likely it won't work. You never know. But so that's it. Uh, I'll close in a word of prayer. Thank you for this time we have, dear Heavenly Father, for this time in your word. And we, help, we hope that these words, this information will, will allow it to grow in us and be effectually uh, in us because we believe it. In Jesus' name, amen.